As the number of Ebola cases surpasses 2,000 in the Congo, where it originates from, those fighting the horrific viral hemorrhagic fever are under attack, as Reuters reported. The deputy mayor of Benai in the Eastern Democratic of Congo said 13 civilians were killed in an attack by the Allied Democratic Forces, the ADF, a group thought to be linked to the Islamic State. Back in 2014, the Sierra Leone outbreak resulted in over 28,000 infections and roughly 11 thousand dead. It's no wonder that we are seeing immigrants from the Congo crossing the U.S.'s southwestern border. Recently, U.S. Border Patrol reported they had apprehended 15 immigrants from Congo. We Build the Wall crowdsourcing founder Brian Colfidge posted on his Facebook page claiming an as-yet-unconfirmed DHS insider exposed to him U.S. Congo migrants have made it to the USA with confirmed cases of Ebola. Three are in custody in Laredo, Texas, and six in Laredo, Mexico, and in Juarez, right next to their wall. But even if Colfage's information is flawed, what's to stop Ebola from spreading amongst refugees south of the border? And then what? Over a million immigrants will cross the border in 2019 alone, and they are being flown and bussed all over the United States on the taxpayer's dime. Ebola can take up to 21 days to manifest. That gives an infected immigrant roughly three weeks to illegally enter the country and spread Ebola via body fluids. Fortunately, hospital staff in the United States have been trained due to the international panic from the 2014 Sierra Leone outbreak. At present, the risk to our nation directly is extremely low just because of where this is. Uh, that may change if we get outbreaks into, if it spreads into Goma or into Kinshasa or into, you know, into Kampala or something like that as we get, if this sort of dwells on. But we do have a very effective screening program now that we've developed uh, in a sense as a consequence of that 2014 experience. So I do think we're very prepared here. This is why I come back and say, and I'll say to you in a general for our health security, the best thing this nation can do to protect its health security is to detect, respond, and prevent these outbreaks where they start. But why would we disregard national security to a degree that puts us all at risk? Is it simply to satisfy the Democrats' fantasy that there is no crisis on the border? Last month alone, we saw 144,000 people come into our country illegally. It is overwhelming our system. And President Trump made it clear that Mexico must do more. Yesterday, the president directed us, myself, the secretary of state, and our team to meet with a Mexican delegation at their request and hear them out. Progress was made. The Mexican delegation brought forward proposals, but as the president said last night, it was not nearly enough. And we made it clear yesterday at the White House that Mexico must do significantly more. I think it's safe to say you've talked to all of our members. We're not fans of terrorists. We're still hoping that this can be avoided. At the same time, it's way past time the president's request for assistance from our government be met. I mean, we walked out of here after we did this supplemental, and the Democrats insisted on taking out of the supplemental they just passed in the House yesterday anything to address the humanitarian crisis at the border that would be funded by Health and Human Services. We all believe that immigration is the constant reinvigoration of America, enriching America with immigrants, with, enriching America with their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations. And uh, again, it's a happy, really a happy day because our dreamers, they're the gold standard. They love America. They're patriotic. How can the government claim they have an interest in national security and continue a position of open borders where millions of U.S. citizens could die from diseases crossing that border? John Bound reporting.